All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Alessandro. I'm Italian, so if you don't understand me, there's no subtitle there, so you can ask questions. So don't get offended. I, I have an accent, a very strong accent. So, um, so today we're going to see, uh, we're going to talk about Livito Madre. So Livito Madre is the mother's door that goes into Panettone. Actually, before I start, I might put some Panettone in, in the prover. One second. Um, so yeah, it was, um, so we're talking about Livito Madre. So Livito Madre is a Steve Sabado starter. Um, usually has between 45 and 50 percent hydration. So it's very different from your liquid starter. Um, not only for um, amount of water, but also for um, the relationship between bacteria uh, and yeast. So, Madre uh, Sabado, as you probably know, you have uh, uh, two different components in it. So you got an yeast component and you got uh, lactic bacteria, so uh, lab. Um, in a liquid starter, uh, the, the type of uh, lab that you have, uh, they call homofermentative uh, obligate. So they only convert uh, to um, lactic, uh, um, lactic acids. In the stiff starter, you have uh, different type of lactic bacteria. So you got lacto, uh, they called uh, um, heterofermentative um, obligates, and they convert um, uh, they convert starches into um, lactic acid, acetic acid, CO2, and alcohol. All right. So very different uh, type of scenarios that you have. So in the one of the key things on shelf life for panettone and also structure and texture is the presence of uh, acetic acid into your, uh, into your product, into your mother dough. Without that, you can't have shelf life. You can't have, um, well, I must say, the relationship between the acetic acid and lactic acid, which comes from the lactic uh, bacteria, gives you a good shelf life, good texture, uh, good property of mi mixing property uh, and so forth. So, very, very different scenario. Um, so, just to understand how the uh, lactic fermentation, I guess, works, uh, in the, within the lactic fermentation, you have, as I said, different type of uh, lactic bacteria, and they will really have a huge impact on your, on your um, not only on your levain, but also on your panettone at the end. So say, um, you know, if you have, for example, uh, a levain that has too much lactic acid, uh, what is going to happen is your levain is gonna, not going to come up um, uh, uh, high enough. And when you go and mix your dough, the dough is not going to develop uh, the right, um, right gluten structure. Um, same thing, if you have too much acetic acid, what is going to happen is the same thing. You're going to have bad shelf life, bad, bad aromas, and when you go and mix your, your panettone, um, the, the dough is going to be very stiff. So you've got, very, you've got to be very careful on how you, uh, I guess, you, uh, you feed your starters and how you maintain them. So this is the key to success or unsuccess of the panettone. Franco. How do you know when your mama is sourdough is actually too acidic? Yeah. So this is a way to find out um, how, if it's too acidic or too lactic. So when we, ha when you, when we, when we do sourdough, we always talk about acidity, and we always talk about volumes, very important, okay? So in an ideal scenario, um, uh, so we should really um, d divide the maintaining routine to the production routine. So if you have an acidic sourdough, for example, or a lactic, um, uh, lactic sourdough, the volumes that you're going to achieve within saying the maintenance uh, schedule or the production schedule, they're going to be uh, different from what they are supposed to be. So a sourdough in good health should uh, triple in size either in maintenance and in, in uh, production. So if you start, for example, is, is between the two and a half times to three times, right? So if you say if you, just an easy way to do it is, you know, you, you have your mother dough, you put the mother dough into a two liter container, 
you put a tonogram of it, it has to feel at least, it has to go at least two liter within other 18 hours if you are in maintenance or uh, in three and a half to four hours, depending again on the feed you're doing, in you know, three and a half hours to four hours uh, in the prover at 27 degrees. Does anyone understand that? I know it's a bit tricky, so we say, okay, so we go in maintenance, which you get, this is the maintenance phase. So maintenance is when you feed your starter daily to maintain your starter. The production is you got to feed your, your you got to take the mother's dough that you have in your um, maintenance, and you, f you do like shorter feed with higher amount of intake. The intake is the amount of starter you put into the mother dog. All right? So what was the timing on the first one? So for maintenance is, um, is eight, well, maintenance is about 18 hours. Is anything between 15 and 18 degrees. And production is the, so say in a scenario, you come in the morning, you want to make your sourdough, you have a sourdough in good health and you start your routine. So you feed your starter in the morning, three and a half hours later, you feed that again, three hours later you make the first dough. So you can either choose between two or three feeds. And depending on that, you got to uh, do different ratios. But going back to Franco's question, how you, uh, how you tell from if it's too acidic or too lactic, you got to really look at your start, sourdough starter. All right, so for example, if it's too sticky, so the first, thing to, to, the first thing to do is look at your starter. So when you remove your starter from the container, should not leave any uh, residue on your container. That, that tells you, for example, that the sourdough is in good health. If it's sticky, it's got, gone too lactic. If you smell and it's really strong, it's too acidic. And you've got to fix this issue before you actually go in production. If you ever, I mean, you're probably going to, I did heaps of time, right? So I had a starter which wasn't right, and I tried to make sourdough, as I make panettone. Yeah, I, try, I just, I shouldn't say waste my time because I actually learned that I should not do that. But you're pretty much wasting a lot of ingredients and a lot of stuff. So number one thing, this, has, this is the key for the success of your sourdough of your panettone, sorry. Yeah, so when, um, when we do uh, the sourdough, the, the medievito madre, so this is very controversial, right? And it's also, um, and it's also not, not essential, to be honest. So, but this gives you one element of knowing if your sarta is Okay or not okay? So it's a help. But it can be the only way to measure your starter. Because remember, this gives you the total acidity. And who remembers what acidity we have in our sourdough starter? What kind of acidity we have? Lactic and acidic. This gives you the total of the acidity. How do you know that? how much of one or the other you have, you don't know. But you know your sourdough is in good health if you measure the pH and also you see the volume of your mother. So put it in that way, a, a, a start, start in good health, always gonna have a, a right pH. But a right pH doesn't tell you necessarily that your start is in good health. Everyone understand that? Any question? One second. So pH levels really depend if it's in maintenance or in, in uh, production. In maintenance, you're looking at 385 to 4, roughly. So a more acidic environment um, that looks up, you look after basically the lactic more than east in that, in that scenario. When you go in production, anything between 4.1 to 
to 4.2 is, is acceptable. Um, this for the Sauda starter, for the Lievito Madre. Right, so that's, re that's the range that you're looking at. So maintenance is 385, three, even four is acceptable. Four, you know, 385 is the borderline and four is the borderline. Ideal 39, 395, it's perfect. And production is really, you know, 405 to one, uh, 4.1 to 4.2, But 4.1 is the, 4.1 to 4.15, ideal. Okay. Another important thing to consider when you make, when you make Lievito Madre is that you can't leave that in the fridge, go on order and come back and make panettone. All right, so when you, put the, when you put the madre in the fridge, it takes about 10 days of looking after it before you can actually go and make panettone. It's a lot, more, a lot less forgiving than, than the uh, liquid event. Liquid event, you can mix it, put it in a fridge, you come back a week later, you kind of do a couple of feeds, and then it's, you can make bread, right? In maintenance, you said you're feeding it every 18 hours. Is 20, it? So the cycle is 24 hours. Oh, okay. Cycle is, cycle is 24 hours. Um, 18 hours, you could feed it. Within, you know, 80, so say you have uh, production, right? So you do your 18 hours of maintenance or 16 hours of maintenance. And then you do your eight hours. What is that? What's the math? What's the, well, how many hours in a day? 24 hours. So, yeah. So you do three feet, say, three, uh, three hours each. So three, six, and then 18 hours uh, in here. Uh -huh. All right. But say you are not making, you're not making panettone, yeah. you can't just do maintenance. That's the, that's the catch, right? So. If you only do maintenance, so that means only do feed every 24 hours, yeah. and you keep your levain at 16, anything between 15 and 18 degrees, you got to remember the yeast doesn't like cold environments. Yeah. So in that case, what you have is a yeast that is full of, uh, you know, gr great environment for, for bacteria, but not so great for, um, for yeast. So say, if you're not making, if you're not using this in production, for example, it's always best to give a couple of, at least once a week, a couple of warm feed, I call it. So warm feed means at 27 degrees. So you do 16 hours here, and you take that out, you, you feed it, you put it at 27 degrees for three hours, you feed it again, and another three hours at 27, and then you go and you, do your, you put it back at I-16. So you do short feed at, in a warm environment, and then you put it back for 18 hours or 16 hours in this. Well, all right, so if you want to make panettone, I suggest you to do at least for three days, at least, a warm feed. You don't have to do necessarily two, but at least one warm feed and one maintenance feed. Because you want that is to be active. You don't want to start uh, producing panettone if that's not right. Yeah. Because you're not, never going to have success doing that. Yeah, yeah so that's the key. So that's, that's an error that I was doing myself a long time ago. I was kind of doing only maintenance feed. And then I thought, okay, today I'm making panettone. I do two warm feed. At night I do it my first door, and the panettone wasn't right. And the reason is the yeast. Uh, is not active enough, all right? So when you talk about lactic bacteria and yeast, so you, you think about a relation of one to a hundred. So where one is the yeast and 100 is lactic bacteria. That's the amount that you have here. So you put that in a fridge, that relationship changed to one to 10. And before you, come in, you take it back to one to a hundred, it takes about 10 days of looking after it. So it is very important to looking looking after this. Is that right, Franco? What's your experience on this? Um, I think yes, I, I, I agree with you. But at the same time, I think that would be worth to talk about on the maintenance. Uh, is it there any type of maintenance that you do in different ways? And if there is any ways 
Yeah. Yeah, so for the maintenance of your start, you got really three different type of maintenance. Is that what you're talking about? Like the libero? Yeah. So we have, so this is called um, free or libero or free sabado, free, free maintenance. So where you put your yeast into a container, right? There's no pressure whatsoever. The, 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 the leven is free to uh, increase in volume with no extra pressure. And then you have one which is in water, uh, which is the one I was using, uh, I'm, I'm still using. It's not practical when you have to travel around. And the third, and, or when you're making a home, you know, you have a lot of wastage and, and you're working with a small mass, so that's interfered with. Uh, and then is legato, is, uh, where we sh you shave off the crust all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you have the legato, which is the Milan tradition of uh, making the start of the starter. So you, pr you, mix, you mix your dough, you put, it, you put it into clean wrap, and then you tie it around the cloth, and then a rope around it. So the, uh, the leven grows always in, uh, in a very tight environment. What that does is just slows down the processes. And some people they say that that method is, gives you a lot, of, a lot of pop in the oven and a, a lot of strength. Uh, but I recently done a technology, uh, technology on sourdough starters and this guy was saying that Italians are very romantic and these are very traditional. So depending on what, what region you're coming from, um, each one is, uh, this is the only way to do panettone, or this is the only way, or this is the only way. So it, it's very much understanding what type of uh, temperature you're working with and what type of intake you put in your mother. For example, in a, if you're maintaining a sourdough in water, because naturally you dissolve some of the acidity in the water, you need, you got a, you got to think about the amount that you put into your feed. So you would put more, so say you do a one kilo leven to 1.2 kilo flour for 24 hours. If you, because some of that acid and some of that yeast will dissolve in water. If you're doing this, or the legato, for example, the, the one in a rope, um, there's no dispersion of any, any of, the lactic, of the lactic bacteria of the yeast. So you would do like a, a one to two feed. So where one is your leven and two is your flour. And you also need to think about percentage of water because the one in water has seeds in water. You can't add too much water to your dough because that leven would take some of liquid from your water. So you always have to think about what uh, type of starter and, and temp temperature range. So say you got a lactic or acetic sourdough, you would then do a different kind of feed to your mother dough in order to either shift the fermentation towards a lact or to shift lactic bacteria towards uh, a lactic fermentation or to acetic fermentation. Um, one of the method is a water bath, right? So if you have for example, a yeast, um, a lievito madre, which is too acidic, you can do a water bath, right? So a water, what, the way it works, we might actually do one later. You just grab your starter, you slice it, you put it into a bowl with, uh, th with water 38 degrees, roughly 35, and then you put a bit of sugar or fractus, even better, and then you let it sit for like 15 to 20 minutes. Then you squeeze your uh, lievito madre, and then you go and feed it. So this is one of the methods. Another method is um, increasing the amount of flour that you add to your leven. So instead of, say, doing a 1 to 1, or sorry, a 1 to 1 1.5 uh, ratio, you would do 1 to 2, or 1 to 3 if it's very bad. And then you allow that lievito madre to still reach three times within the time that is required. Okay? Reducing the acidity. Huh? Reducing the acidity. Yeah. All right, so another important thing is some, sometimes what happens, the, the lievitromatic will get will weaken. So if 
if the lievito is weak, the first thing we have to do is looking after your yeast amount. So a yeast can be other, would, could not grow for two reasons. One is because it's too um, acid, and one is because it doesn't have enough yeast component. Right? So if you imagine a, a garden bed, and you have to seed some grass, and you don't have any grass, you can't just put three seeds and hope that you're gonna, it's gonna grow in three days. You got to put the right amount of seeds in order to uh, grow your grass. Same thing here, so you got to put enough yeast to allow this to have the right amount of yeast, and then when the yeast is right, then we go and fix the bacteria. I know it's very difficult to understand all in once because it's me this is like 15 years of what I've been learning, right? So we just try to <laughs> put everything together. So, and I'm still learning, you know? I still haven't finished. Sometimes I... This, the, absolutely, absolutely. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's the way it works for me. A few years ago, I did a course with this amazing chef, Italian chef. Uh, it's called... Um, What's his name? Uh, Morandin. Yeah. So his daughter, she's a food technologist. And she's very much, that's the only way. Because he's very, he's very, this man is very old and he does things by, by just touching it and feeling. He doesn't use, the, they said this is shit, don't use it, just tracking a bean and, and so forth. And he used the water bath method. And he said, this is the only way to make panetta. I'm like, hang on a minute. Everyone else, does many other why how can that be the only way to do it and then you know after talking to Franco and to other player, people and it's all like you know conversation is like well no it's actually not true what's the uh, what's the um, the science behind it which is very important right so one method is not necessarily better than another it's just the way that, that you've learned in fact I actually spoken to this year to um, um, to a very famous pastry chef in Italy, what's his name? Uh, uh, anyway, he's in Milan. Uh, it's the oldest pastry shop, pastry shop in Italy, uh, 1820, I think. Uh, Beduschio, right? And um, so in his kitchen, he has his son and, and another person. They're actually making panettone, and they're best panettone in Italy, right? Really good panettones. And they have two, two, two different starters. One is water bath and one is in the legato. And I said, which one do you use? So, well, it doesn't matter. If my son makes it, you use the legato. If my uh, worker makes it, use the water bath. I don't care, as long as the panettone is good. Um, and everyone knows, because the more you do, the more you get to know the processes, the more you get to, s to know your levain. And did you try both, and could you tell the difference, or you didn't? <laughs> well, um, I uh, tried both. I never tried actually to, oh, actually I did. Uh, I tried all the three methods. I tried all the three methods. To be honest, maybe I'm not good enough to understand the difference. Or maybe we just, it's like wines, right? It's, this is a, it's all, you know, it's got tang. It's just all, sometimes it's all bullshit as well, right? So you've got to be honest, right? So it's, um, and you're feeding people, you're not feeding chefs. That's another thing. Pandora is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, you can, this one can be used for anything for bread, for croissants, for everything, right? This is very versatile, a lot more than the liquid leaven. Liquid leaven you can only use to, to make bread. Some people might argue that, but you know, uh, as soon as you start adding fat and, uh, and sugars, you know, your liquid leaven, you just, you know, can't support that, so I don't know. Well, that's a very good question. So we got actually three different types of flour. We've got the Italian flour, which is, of course, is better. All right, Franco? <laughs> then we got provenance flour. And then we got Euro flour. So these have uh, the two different. No, I just, uh, I just was I just talking shit. Right? So it's not necessarily true. Hi. By? By numbers. So they okay. hit a number, they hit this, they hit that, they hit that, and it's like done. Mix for three minutes, do this. No, that's rubbish. That's, what I'm that's absolutely rubbish, that's right? So, so just forget, you forget it. It's about touch and feel. Absolutely. You get the base like anything. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're making bread and today is three degrees more. Yeah. No, I'm just asking you what your process is. No, yeah, mean. absolutely. Because some people are literally like. No. Yeah. No, no. So, yeah, it's a very good question. So we, we're not talking about times and. Yeah. 
temperature, humidity, these are variable, and they're called variable for a reason, right? So, because they vary. And uh, you, you go to Melbourne, you got different humidity than Gold Coast, right? And you got to be able to, to use what you have and what equipment do you have to make it work for you. So, uh, mixing times, it depends on the machine, it depends on of the mass you're doing. Um, because if you're mixing 150 kilo of dough versus 40 kilo of dough, will have an impact on how, how, and even sometimes with, even with the same amount of dough, but you use two different machines. Like if you're using Geotech or if you're using Salva, the, even the second speed of those machines have different repetitions. So one would, might take 20 minutes more than the other to mix. So it's completely like, you know, you got to learn your, equi uh, learn your equipment, learn your environment, but, and learn this as well. So it's all about learning. That's why it's tricky, because yeah. you can buy 20 books, 20 books will tell you different, 20 different things. That's why I think that it's only Christmas in Australia is really good. Well, it depends. <laughs> if you go and mix in my it. Bakery, it's great. <laughs> yeah. So what, what temperature you mix your paint? Oh. And, it, that, and in a what time of machine you have a spiral or you got the... Spiral, yeah. But we have two locations, so they keep it active. I don't get involved with them, so I let the Italian... <laughs> Where are you based? In Sydney. Right. Who's this? Uh, who's, the, who's the baker there? Staple Bakery. I, um, about Fabrizio. Because uh, uh, there's a few, few times they're doing panettone as well in yeah. Sydney. It's Sonoma. I have a new, I have a new Italian baker, Luther, as well. Who, he's trained with a bit with Bonchi. And, Oh yeah. yeah, I just did a course with Bonchi like yeah. a few months ago. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's very good. Yeah, yeah. very uh, great character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, what we we were talking about? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you go. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Outside of the main team, um, main it's, it's just that: do you start the level from my day from <coughs> scratch, or is it possible to start from the like? Uh, do you know who gave me this? Sourdough. My friend Frank who gave this to me. <laughs> But then I crossed that with somebody else, Flavin. So it's not you. Just, so you are you one parent, and then you, I got also another parent. I mixed the two. I had two, and I was feeding them. I said, Fuck, no, I can't be bored. I'm just going to mix them together, and that's it. So Franco is. <laughs> so we don't know the mother, though. So he's the father. Ciao, Franco. <laughs> yeah, you can start from scratch, for sure. Yeah. So the question is, can you start this from scratch or do you use uh, some, yeah, somebody else? Yeah. So. Um, like the, the usual level that you use. Yeah, right? you can, definitely. Absolutely. So, again, you know, going back to this course I didn't need to know, you can't, you can't start from the Levin and do this. Well, that's all bullshit. It's, you, got, you got to think that you got in mothers, in Levin, in uh, liquid Levin or stiff Levin, you got lab, which is lactic bacteria, and you got yeast, right? The lactic bacteria in the liquid, they, harm, they, ha, they are um, or, no, uh, homofermentative, homofermentative uh, and they only produce lactic acid. So there's no acetic acid in liquid leven. But it's why to get those to produce as, uh, uh, acetic acid. In fact, it can actually produce panettone with liquid leven, but you've got to work within a temperature range of 8 to 10 degrees. So you can have, it's a technique I'm actually learning and studying, and it's not easy. But you can actually do that. I haven't done it myself yet, but I've seen it, people have, are doing it. It's very difficult. It's not very difficult, it's a completely different technique. So going back to your question, can you do this? Yes, you can, but you can't, you've got to think about, allow it at least a month to convert the liquid to a stiff. You can't do overnight and mix it. Yeah, it's in, you can make bread with it, that's not a problem. With a stiff dough, stiff starter, that you just convert it from a liquid starter, you can make bread. As soon as you have fat and sugars, that's when it gets tricky. Cool? So this is provenance. So, uh, the Spitfire, I think? Yeah. Why is it nice? Because I like that flour. Good. I like that flour. Um, this is Euro T55. Yeah, we use that as well. But yeah. do you change the hydration? Do 
depending on the flower, or you just always? You can. You can. And what I want to show you is the difference between this and this, too. So there's a huge amount, there's a huge difference, right? So when you're using, uh, when you want to make a uh, stiff leaven, the flower needs to be white. It can't have any bran in it, zero, right? Reason is the bran is very easy for the lactic bacteria to ferment, very easy. In fact, when you have a leaven which is weak, you just put a bit of uh, whole milk grain or whole uh, stone ground flour and your leaven is going to be up in a couple of hours. The reason why is the, uh, the, sh the, the bran um, is easy, easy processed by the, uh, by the lactic uh, bacteria and it, it is processed in lactic acid. So you throw your lievito mother off balance completely. You can't do it. You can make a panettone with this flour, but you can't have maintenance. You can't maintain your, uh, your lievito madre with this flour. Mm -hmm. So the city, we will, do you see the volume? Yeah. yeah. The color, well, the color doesn't matter, but the, the, the volume is massive. So you see this one here, this is actually overproved a little bit, so it's kind of deflated, but it was up until here, then I traveled to Melbourne this morning, from Melbourne this morning, so it kind of, so that's the euro, and that's the, the Spitfire. So what happened is, when I was talking about volumes and acidity, to maintain your starter, you don't, you don't need to have a specific flower necessarily. It has to be white and it has to be a, a good pro protein level. Like it, in Europe, we have this definition of W. I don't know if, you ever, if you're familiar with that, with the W a number. So working with the, the same flour all the time, it will tell you that your leaven is ready at one sort of height. So when I was saying about three, three, triple in volume, doesn't have to be triple. It can be 2.5 or 2.7. As long as you, you know for that flower what you're looking for. And you've got to keep that flower all the time to, in order to have some sort of constant, constant on your feeding. And uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to do the past the more exciting part. So we're going to mix the, uh, we're going to read the pH level, I guess, on the flower, in the flower, uh, inside in the, uh, live in and then uh, we see what how we're gonna fit it in a different way pH Have you seen this? This is a, a reptile incubator Yeah It's pretty cool, huh? So this does the cold and the hot and the warm So yeah A wine fridge doesn't do warm. So only go to 18 or 20? Yeah. yeah. So this goes to th up to 30, I think. So if you want to use... Oh, oh, oh 50? Oh. <laughs> Don't try on 50, you're going to burn the, your house down. So yeah, so it's good for, uh, for your starters and stuff. So what's we talking about? Uh, yeah, so 15. So it's 398, which is the range that we were looking for. So anything, you know, 385, 3... So at 385 to, to 4, uh, with 39 being the perfect. But you know, as, we, as we know, life is not perfect. So sometimes it's, it's all this. So, so 398, so we're going to take this reading. Ah, it was one point something. I said, what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, sorry? Did you make a loaf of bread? Yeah. With 500 grams of flour, how much of the bitumen? Oh, usually you work on the 20% sort of thing. Okay, so it's... Yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. So that's... Uh, still thinking. Um, so 
So when we feed our mad leave it to Madre, oh, it's 390. There you go. Um, so we want to, after the, after the mixing, we want to land on a temperature of 26, 27 degrees, right? So we need to think about the environment, think about the, the, um, the temperature of the environment, and think about the, the type of machine we're using, because each machine warm up the, your leven in, in different ways. So we kind of, um, you know, we kind of need to figure out a way to land to 26, 27 degrees um, every day. Because that's, that's what's really important to, to make the, this very, say, I guess, the yeast uh, active straight away, right? So, so that's 392 and So I'm going to use, I use um, water 38 to 40 degrees to feed my starter. So at the end, I hope I'm going to have 26, 27. All right, so uh, do we have any? All right, 38. Oh. So we have um, a reading of four, four per, uh, sorry, four pH. But the volume is kind of um, is not up, right? Uh, do you have a KitchenAid or a mixer anywhere? Oh yeah. Um, the bowl. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a, a two to one uh, feed. So. Um, we're going to feed two parts of this to one part, sorry, one part of this to two parts of flour. And then we're going to put 43% of water. So hydration is also very important. So in the maintenance fee for a free leven, so lievito libero, we always work with standard 43 to 45%, depending on the flour you're using, of course. So if it's a flour that has very reach uh, very high protein level, you might can, you, you can put 45%. If it's a little bit lower, you put 43%. But anything between 42 to 45 is acceptable. And then if, if your leven is not in a good shape, then you can either reduce the hydration or increase the re, uh, hydration, depending on what you want to achieve. So you want to push towards a lactic fermentation or acidic. So. Um, so I was saying before, when you remove this, should not leave any, any residue or small residues on the container. That's a good way to see where your leven is in good shape, which is good. So no, no residue. I like cutting the leven in the middle, so I want to see the structure, the internal structure. And that tells me as well if your leven is in good shape. So. So this structure you have, see the, you got a nice open pockets. Um, the um, holes are oblong, oblong, how do you say that in English? Ovals, there you go. So they need to be, they can't be just rounds, because rounds is a sign of lactic fermentation. So then, your leven should, be an, uh, should have an ivory color. It should not stick when you touch it. You're not happy to touch it? Huh? It looks like a point. Yeah, so it doesn't, you want, don't, don't want it to stick. If it sticks, it means that the lactic has gone too far. The smell, you got, it has to be like a nice and sweet smell. It's a bit picky, but it can't be too strong. It's, otherwise, it's acidic. You smell it? And you can actually taste that a little bit. Actually, what I might do, I might cut this. That should be enough for me. So what we might do is, if you guys want to taste that, um, that should be enough. You can just put something in your mouth. So you put this in the tip of your tongue, and you should have kind of a lemon, lemony kind of taste. That's the acidic acid you feel. So you got to allow maybe 10 seconds in order to, to this to warm up a bit. And then it should be to be sharp. So you get it like right at the end. It takes, hmm? a while and it takes a while and then it kicks in like that. 
And then you've got to have a metallic kind of flavor without bitterness, though. If you got a bitter, then it's not right. But to be honest, if this is the look of your Levin and the ties and the touch, and this is clean, and then the volume is right, yeah, it's fine. Then you can get, get rid of your pH meter. All right, so what we do, we ideally, we take the, just the middle, Anyone want some to take home? That's not, that's Italian, huh? Just remember that. <laughs> All right, no worries. So let's do as much as I can. So, so if you guys want, you can take it home. So I remove always the crust. Unless you stuff it up, then you can use the crust as well. So <laughs> if you make panetto and you say, shit, I didn't calculate my thing. I, I have to put it in and hope it's going to work, but <laughs> if you can, try not to. Again, in an ideal world, you want to keep just the, the middle part because that's where the, you got more activity. You got more protection for the external environment, so it's more stable in terms of temperature and um, processes, so yeah. Can you cover your domain? Uh, no, you don't want to cover it. You don't want to cover it uh, because you kind of want to make the uh, the crust is very important, right? so you want to that crust to form. Yeah. So if you cover it, then you're kind of blocking the air to go through because you've got to remember that a, there's a lot of live animals inside. So, um, so you do 350, 300 grams. All right, 300 grams. And then we put 600 grams of flour. Forty-three percent, yeah. Six hundred gram times forty-three, two fifty-eight. Is that right? When you are um, working with start with starters, be very careful of your um, hand sanitizers, soap, all all this stuff because they can really affect your starter when you touch it. Is it locked? Yeah. Or should I sit on it? There you go. So you mix it for about you know, three, three minutes. Again, this is, I'm, I'm talking about standard Levin, which is in a good shape. If it's not in a good shape, for example, we can change slightly the way we mix it. So we might under mix it. Uh, just to get more acetic, uh, acetic acid uh, production, or we might decrease the hydration. We might increase the intake. So instead of doing one to two feed, we might do one, and a half, uh, one to one and a half, for example. Or we might do one to three if it's too acidic. So there's a very different uh, mixing, um, mixing way, I guess, and technique depending on what we want to achieve for our sourdough starter or to leave it to madre. Um, some, some people, they like to dissolve this in water first to oxygenate the yeast, um, and then it can add flour in it. So that's the purpose of this is, I guess, is uh, oxygenating the yeast to so give the yeast a bit of a boost um, and stimulate the um, um, I guess the yeast production. So it depends. If if your yeast is in good shape, you don't really need to do a lot of it. If you if if this is is okay, you don't have to do um, much to it. Oh, you got to feed it regularly. I think when it, it comes tricky when you start putting in the, this in the fridge, uh, you might not feed for a week or so, and that's when you start to unbalance all the things. All the, but if you look after it, you know, it's, it's rare that you have issues. Yeah, very rare. When you're in, in production, is, and you do like, say, you know, for in Europe, for example, Christmas time, like November, you start making this, and you go in production. The more you do it, the better your Levin is. I mean, it's, you get to the end of the month, and it's, your Levin is just amazing. And also um, amounts, when you do like a small amount in your kitchen, is is a bit trickier 
because the smaller is the amount, they're more affected by external factors. So temperature, humidity. If you got a big mass, for example, compared to a small mass, if it's hot or cold or whatever, a small mass gets affected more than a big mass. So a few years ago, I was losing my shit because I was feeling this regularly. I had a very small mass and I was keeping the leven in water and my leven was not right. And I said, well, why is it not right? And the, the reason was because I had only had like 500 grams. I would put it into water, like cold water. The temperature of the water would um, uh, drop the temperature of my leven straight away. So the fermentation wasn't kicking. And then my leven was always weak. And then I start when I was working with small amounts to leave the start at room temperature for a couple of hours and then put it into the water. So my yeast would start activate and then by the time I was putting that in the water, then I was, my yeast was already floating and all that. So it's uh, just a learning thing. Like this one, for example, I don't put it back straight into the at 15 degrees. I usually leave this for an hour just to start kicking a little bit and then I put that in, the, in, in my, uh, my cell here. Was that? Um, it's okay. You kind of have to work with the temperature you have, um, I guess. So it's not ideal. That's not ideal for for baking in general. Like if, even if you make bread, it's too cold here, right? So um, yeah. But so this is a bit too warm. Again, because the amount of so I'm used to do a smaller amount of. Uh, Small amount of dough because we put a gram of flour in this machine that was much a lot more. So that's I think is about 30 degrees. It's a little bit too hot, but um, so it should be around 27. So why 28 is too hot? Sorry, 28 is too hot. So the closer we get to 30, the more we're going to stimulate the lactic uh, uh, homoferment or more fermentative, facultative, oh, sorry, obligate, which are the one that, you know, they're finding yogurt, for example, and things like this, and they're very strong. So once they get, in, once they get to this, it's very hard to get rid of them. So, so then we need to be um, stay very far for 30 degrees. It's 29.5, which is acceptable. So what I'm doing is I'm cooling this down in this, and then I'm, gonna, I'm going to laminate this. We could have even gone a little bit stiffer. So what we're going to do, we're going to laminate this. Is, that's again, that's not essential, but it's, again, it standardize the process, see the volume. So if you don't do this, you're still going to have a good leaven, but you're not going to see the same rise on volumes. That's because the gluten has been, hasn't been worked enough. So it's like when you're making your liquid starter. Some people, they just mix it. Some people, they actually whisk for longer with with fork or a whisk so it can trap it can increase more in volume one or the other but both are good right so just gonna do a couple of uh So what I did, sorry, I just roll it to the kind of this thickness. That's, thicknesses are not important. Um, and then we just fold it, just fold this over. So if you're doing at home and you do with a rolling pin, leave this door for like 10, 15 minutes, covered on the bench so it can relax a bit. And then you can use your rolling pin. Because otherwise you need, you know, you know your biceps after three weeks, they're going to be like this. So we give maybe, you know, three or four until this is nice and smooth. 
and then we, we can do the next one. So as you see, the Leven is getting smoother and smoother. So this is important as well to cool down the temperature. So if you hand, end up with Leven too cold, sorry, too warm, you can pass this a couple of times and then, uh, sorry, what I say, too, too warm, this is gonna cool, that, that cool, cool it down. So you can even under, under mix in the machine and then finish to mixing it. Same when you do the pasta. That's the last one. Just to be nice and smooth. The dough needs to be nice. So if your dough is rough, it's not pleasant. But this, what this does is, again, it's very controversial. Some people say this is a waste of time. Um, some people say, no, you got to do it, otherwise you're going to go out of business. So where do you sit? What do you listen? You know? But I guess what this does is traps a bit of oxygen. So fermentation can be either um, aerobic or anaerobic. Um, when in, in fermentation, it mainly is um, anaerobic, right? So at the beginning is aerobic, and then when you got the gluten mesh, this you know, what, know why the oxygen can go through. Okay, so uh, yeah, air can go through. Guess this is the theory behind this. You're actually trapping some of the oxygen in, inside of the of this, so you kind of extend the time of your aerobic fermentation. So that's the theory behind. Whether it's true or not, I'm not sure. Just to make sure that the there's less acidity produced in an anaerobic. So yeah. So yeah, so this is the theory behind, but it's also to increase good structure and to have, you know, the, when you see like, to see these beautiful alveoles inside, so you got to do this. If you don't do this, you don't see that. And I guess that's a good way to see whether your start is healthy, is ready, so yeah, you got. But it's made to drop the temperature, cool down the temperature, and to create that thing, uh, that um, anaerobic, so. So when you get to the end, you kind of, you know, the reasons why there's different techniques. So some people, they just might fold this. Some, I usually do this. And then I put this into a container, all right? And then that's ready to go for the next day. So what we want here is 27 degrees, 26, anything between 25 and 27. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it's 27. What's that? What would the pH of this be now? pH would be around five and a half, or five, five and a half. So this is one to two, so it should be around five. Yeah. So when we talk about pH, we've got to remember that yeast and bacteria have different pH tolerance. Uh, yeast are very, uh, they, they can live within a three and a half, five and a half pH, while bacteria are only four to five. So if we do one to one feed, the pH doesn't drop um, enough. So the time that the bacteria have to increase in numbers is lower. So we, are, we go to favor the yeast activity versus, uh, so that's why it's good to do one, at least one to one and a half, or one to one, or one to two. So we kind of uh, increase the pH higher. So the lab have more time to, uh, to increase in number. So always like, hello. I have a question. Sure. So, uh, was it your intention not to put lid on it so that like, you want to make the top, top the part like uh, dry? Yeah. It, okay. So yeah, it's... Um, Can you only use the like, inside, like soft part? So you want to leave this free. So you don't want to... You don't want to put the lid on it? No. no. So it's actually 24.2, so it's a little bit hot. Uh, I thought it was actually warm, but it's actually a little bit colder than what I wanted. So 
because we're going to mix the next one, so we might put the water a little bit warmer. So maybe we put a 42. It's actually quite cold here, so. But you know, there is nothing major. 24 is still acceptable, right? So there's nothing uh, major, but. Um, so now what we're gonna do, we can't fit this in it. All right, so what you might do, we, can't, we might slice this in pieces. And so the next one, we're gonna use a year flour. So we can have a look at the structure inside. This one, by the way, you can, if you have leven, you can actually dehydrate those, turn it into a powder, put it in a vacuum tape bag. So if you happen at your apprentice, put this in the, in the dough or in the bin, and you, you leave, we don't have any, so you can rehydrate this and start again. So it's always a good idea to put some in a freezer as well. If you want to freeze it, what you can do is you put this um, into a clean wrap and then into a container with a lid or a backpack as well. Uh, you leave that in the fridge for a day and then you put it into the freezer. How long will it last in the freezer? When you take it out of the freezer is pretty much, I'm not saying it's like starting a sourdough from scratch again, but it's close. Yeah, it's close. So, or the best way is going to some friends and grab it. They have it. Or if you've got liquid event, just do it, do it up again. All right, so um, we got, got some. So the water has cooled down now for sure. So we might. Is a thermometer up here? So we might have. Uh, is there a microwave around here? So say if I wanted to have the maintenance fee, what I do, I keep this for an hour into this container and then I put this into uh, these. Uh, 16, 17 degrees or 18 degrees, depending on the mass and depending on what time I want this to be ready tomorrow. So if that's three o'clock now, so if I want to start production tomorrow morning uh, at 7 a.m., I don't have that 24 hours, right? So I would then increase the temperature to 18, 19 degrees. Yeah, correct. Um, so tomorrow, it should be ready on time, but it's good practice to have this a really structured feeding schedule. So if you say every day is seven o'clock, every day is seven o'clock. So ideally, that's what you want. You don't want to take a risk of feeding this now and have to use that ready. So say this is 10 o'clock at night and you want to make production tomorrow at 7 a.m., then it's too risky. So what you would do in that case, a week before you're planning, you kind of shift a couple of hours back every day until you get correct, yeah, all right. For some reason, this is like, oh, it's going crazy. So this is cooled down to 28 degrees. So what we might do, we might put some hot water in it. Yeah, if you want, you can do the same we did before. So you can take it out, see if there's any residue, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, flip it, slice that down the middle, and then open it, see the structure. So you see the color here is a little bit different. So it's more, is it stickier? So you see it's a bit more rough. It can be the knife that is not very sharp, but it's, it's a little bit stickier. So it might be because the fermentation has gone too far, which could be. Huh? It's a little bitter. It's bitter, is it? More than the other one. More wetter. Huh? More wetter. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Since more wet is when, if it's sticky, is, yeah, is, uh, if it's sticky, it's the lactic that comes out a little bit. It's bitter, is it? So what you might do in this case, for example, yeah. is um, uh, doing a water bath. Mm. Yeah, if, or um, you increase the amount of flour. Oh, yeah, look, um, there's another scale there if you want. I don't know why this is that. And then we use a euro flour, so which is this you want one. 300. Uh, yeah, do, uh, if you guys want to take some, um, it's there. Otherwise, we just bin it. Now, for the next one, we're going to do a water bath. 
to do 300 and uh, 600 gram of flour. If you um, if you have a buy a pH meter, but just remember you got to calibrate this pretty much every. Well, this one can you can calibrate every three four days, but in case you you measure your levin and it's not the pH is not right, the first thing you do is you calibrate your tool and you try it again. Because sometimes what happens is this um, goes off off target, and then you have a false reading and it's oh shit what's going on here. So here, uh, have a look at yeah. 600, yeah, and then we do 50, uh, 43%, so that was at 258, wasn't it? Yeah, 258 water. So the water as well, it is very important, okay? So in summer, there's a lot more bacteria growth. So what the water supply does, water, they add chlorine to, to the tap water in order to the bacteria to stop. And if you're using this to pretty much everywhere, I'd say. Well, I don't know, maybe. Plus, yeah, you smell. You can't actually smell. It's like bleach. Like, oof. it's like swimming pool actually. So chlorine is volat volatile. So you, what you could do is you fill up a tank of water, you leave it, and then it will evaporate. Or you just use uh, bottled water for the for this because they can throw you off, throw off the the balances and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like a. Chlorine is, is used to kill bacteria, but you want to have bacteria here, so otherwise it's... So it's um, 0, yeah, 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 2, 2, 5, 2, 5 should be right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think... Oh. Okay, well, what's this? I think it's what it is. Yeah, there you go. Do you go by time or? Yeah, you, you want to mix about you know three four minutes yeah. until it's yeah. Again, if you don't laminate, you can. You just mix a little bit longer. I don't like mixing in this machine because it warms up uh, this too much. So I prefer kind of stop uh, once it's all together and then finish it off in the door break. But that's because I got a door break. If I had if I didn't have it, then you kind of want to mix a little bit longer. And then, thanks very much, man. Right. Thank you. I'll just use that. So before we laminate this, we might do the water bath here. So before we actually go and laminate this, we're going to do a water bath on this. So we see, say your leven is very acidic. Uh, we're actually going to do a water bath. It's not too bad. It's still a little bit of uh, residue. Still not too bad. But I mean, just to see the structure, the internal structure of this one. This is not the same at all. So it's very sticky. You smell it, and it's very tight. So if you taste it. Do you taste in your tongue? Very electric. Uh, first of all, I'm not, I don't know. Would you wash this now, like put it in? Like yeah, I will. So what we do, there's no sugar there, right? But I don't have sugar, I don't know where it is. That's okay. Let's pretend there was some sugar. So I usually put three grams to a liter of water. Each liter of water, three grams. Fractose is ideal. Is easy metabolized by the yeast. All right, so we cut this, just squish this a little bit, and then we put this into the water. For about 20 minutes. So usually what happens is this, if it's this in good health, this will sink. Uh, for about seven to eight minutes, and then we'll come up. So these are these, but again, that's again, that's a bit of a gray area because it depends how much you squish it as well. So if you push it, so this this one here is the same as that one, but I haven't actually pressed enough. So 
Right, so then we leave this for about 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, then we're going to feed these the same way we feed the others. Will that affect the quantity of water? Absolutely, that's a very good question. So yes, definitely. Um, after water, but you try to put 35%. If you are in maintenance, 35% of water. If you are in production, uh, you put 40%. Yeah, because you will have some water that takes yeah. that is taxed, yeah. And uh, while, while this is doing this, we can, uh, oh. we can laminate this. So this one is nice and white. So te technically, we don't need to laminate, right? So if you do at home and you don't have the door break and you want to do it, you can, actually, um, you can actually mix a little bit longer and you have this and then you kind of roll that with your hand to a, a sphere and then you, you put it in a, in a container. Oh, okay, so you don't even need to roll it, you just like make a shape. Yeah. Like See what happened though? You yeah, have yeah, this and yeah. it's not yeah. nice. Yeah. So it's just better to to laminate it. Again, if you don't laminate, don't laminate, never laminate. If you laminate, always laminate. So you can't do, just to see the, because you, you, that will impact the volumes. And then all in a sudden you don't have, you don't have um, kind of a standard, you don't know what you're looking for anymore, right? So. What's that? If you like always laminate, you're going to be more consistent. Yeah. Just like rolling it. Yeah, exactly. So, alrighty. I'll show you how to do it. So, the temperature there should be, I think it's a little, little bit warm, but we're going to take the reading after we laminate that. Oh, I said not yeah. now. Yeah, not now. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, what we might do is just press this down. Uh, what do you have? So, this is a millimeter, so yeah. that's five centimeter. Uh -huh. And then you just do one the other side and then every time you pass this so you say start from here yeah you just go there and then you just just simply move this handle okay. and then you just go on the other so side. So how much um, millimeters do you do at a time? Um, oh, can probably go for the, yeah, sort of so thing. And then you, um, yeah down and then you stop there oh sorry I think we went too far too quick yeah if you go too quick then it's not going to go through Oh, yeah. You actually don't need to press if oh. you're going that way. Oh, right, right, you right, press right. if you're going that way. Yeah, that oh, should be right. <laughs> Go a little bit less, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, you can give it a fold, beautiful, and then you kind of flip the upside down, there you go, perfect. You're all over it. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind if... I start mixing the next one. Yeah. You you do this. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing like three, four times, and then um... guys, have a look. What happened? Oh shit! So this came up. So that tells you that you know it's good. Uh, so this is the provenance Spitfire. So you can the um, bowl is here. So if you um, so what we're saying here. We're only gonna put 35% uh, of water. So what we might do is, you gonna put 20 gram of this. So if you wanna come around here, I'll show you how to take this out. So let's say uh, that's 20 minutes. We're just gonna get it out, squeeze it in, in your hand nicely, and then you just put it there. So we do 200 gram of this and 400 gram of flour. So if you wanna add Four, um, sorry, 400 gram of flour to it. 
And can someone do a 40, sorry, 35 times 400? Perfect, you've done better than mine, see? Oh, I, yeah. No worries, perfect. Good job. Perfect. All right, guys, if you want to have this, you can slice it and then you can wrap it up. Who wants it? Who wants it? So, um, so, we, um, so can we finish this first? Sorry, one second. So we say, how much water 140 do? So here again, we put 35% of water because we had water already here. So 35, 142. Voilà. Same thing. And so if, we take so if you check. Um, very good question. So you can either feed that every day, yeah. or you can put it in a fridge, and every and then you got to kind of feed it. Yep. Like, so every day. Well, ideally, or yes. Ideally, no, no, no. Once a, once a day, it's it's yeah, it's fine. Uh, when you go and produce panettone, though, you got to take it out, feed regularly. Yeah. Um, hey, Michael. So. This is made with, uh, sorry, uh, Italian flour, and the other one, chocolate, is made with, um, uh, with Australian flour. So that's T55 year from Lauke. This is uh, Molino Pazzini. I think it was a bit warm, and they, uh, <laughs> I left it a little bit too long in the top. Those two, are, those two are Euro? Euro and these two are... The Italian uh, one. Italian one, yeah. And what's the name of the Italian flower? Uh, Molino Pazzini. Okay. Yeah. It's actually not... The one for the one is actually not the one uh, designed for panettone. Okay. So it's a little bit... That's all right. Now, I was... Um, actually, went back to, I went to France in October, November and December. So I have a friend in Paris making panettone. So I went back and was making panettone with him. Christophe Louis his name. I don't, know, I don't know if you know the book, the Chamberlain book, Panettone. Yeah. So he's on that book as well. Yeah, Christophe Louis, yeah, Thomas. Oh, yeah, the recipe's on the book, yeah. Christophe Louis, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I went, we tried he's a friend of mine, so I went there and I worked two months. Yeah, so nice. We did uh, four and a half thousand Panettone, so oh, big wow. job. I never worked in my, so hard in my life. <laughs> but, yeah, so I know it was good. It's really good. Then I do a lot of, um, I did a few classes with a guy in Italy, like a food technologist, which is really good. Guys, don't be shy, test the panettone, otherwise it dries out. Are these yours? No, I just bought them at um, Costco. You know Costco? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Brilliant.